The keelback is based on the trusty Lacon Type 6 frame, a modified transport given some teeth due to a perceived weakness in the original's offensive and defensive capabilities. So, if it's a redesign of the much-loved T-6, why is it that so few commanders actually fly it? Like so many variants, it is naturally compared to the original. However, the keelback fulfills a very different role to the T-6, making direct comparisons unfair. If you are looking for a budget transport or exploration vessel, the Lacon T-6 is an excellent option. The keelback, however, compares less favorably in all areas that budget transport or exploration pilots look for. With a shorter jump range resulting from a heavier frame and a lower cargo capacity, pilots looking for an upgrade to the T-6 in these areas are often disappointed. The keelback does sport improvements over the T-6, but these are in areas that traders and explorers don't care about, such as improved hardpoints, a more robust hull, and better shielding. And while the keelback is also the cheapest ship capable of mounting a ship-launched fighter or SLF bay, traders don't typically want SLFs taking up valuable cargo space. So what kind of pilot would fly a keelback? The kind of pilot that really likes to zip around in a small, agile fighter but doesn't have the bank balance to buy a bigger, better mothership. As a low-cost fighter carrier, the keelback excels. Let's take a look at the basic dealership model. On the pad, you'll be struck both by how boxy the keelback is and just how similar it is to the original T6. You could easily mistake one for the other. The only major external difference is the addition of the lateral sponsoons, housing some extra thrusters which pivot to bring thrust to bear in almost any direction. As with the T6, the key characteristic of the external design is its boxiness, with the signature lake on glass nose. It looks robust and functional. If you are at all familiar with the T6, there are only a few surprises once you have cycled the airlock. The keelback shares all its major systems and components with the T-6 and, in fact, the original avionics software shipped with the vessel identified it as a T-6, even displaying the T-6 hull plan on the pilot's console. There are differences to the internal layout due to the additional space needed for launch bay fittings and hull bracing reduces the ship's internal compartment space by one class 4 bay. That is a serious space reduction for a medium-sized ship. On the positive side, the flight deck does have a room for a co-pilot's chair, and the keelback can fit in that all-important Class 5 fighter bay to complement. What's in the box? The standard keelback incorporates Class 4 thrusters, power plant, and frameshift drive housings. This distributor is only a Class 3, which without engineering leaves heavy-duty energy weapons like beam lasers starved of power. A Class 2 sensor suite and a surprisingly small Class 1 life support completes the standard loadout. Even with all A-rated systems, the keelback is heavy in its handling. With even modest engineering, the improvement is obvious, but it still falls well short of the performance of a more combat-focused ship. In terms of options, the ship sports a pair of Class 5 bays. One of these is usually dedicated for use as a fighter bay, while the second should be outfitted as a fuel scoop if the plan is to explore, or a shield generator if the pilot favors combat. There is also a single Class 4 bay, a single Class 3 bay, and a pair of Class 2 bays, as well as a trio of utility points, a pair of light hardports located on the belly of the ship and a pair of medium hardpoints mounted on the upper sides of the sponsoons. The first liftoff at the helm of an untested ship is usually nerve-wracking, with an unfamiliar layout and flight profile. But not so with the keelback. For those who have flown the Type 6, everything about the ship is familiar, right down to the vibrating fuel lines that create the characteristic rumbling honk sound when you hit the boost. It's small enough to fit through the mail slot with room to spare on all sides, making it comfortable for even inexperienced pilots to handle without scraping the paintwork. Obviously, the loadout should reflect the ship's intended use, 
assuming that an SLF is required in any build. If not, you would surely be flying in an alternative ship. How should you outfit your optional base? For exploration, the usual logic is to go for the biggest fuel scoop you can mount, which on the keelback is a class 5. The advent of the new Guardian tech offers some alternatives. It is possible with engineering to exceed a 50 light year jump range with a fully equipped keelback carrying both a surface recon vehicle SRV and an SLF but only if you equip a class 4 fuel scoop and reserve your remaining class 5 compartment for a Guardian FSD booster. A shield generator or auto field maintenance unit AFMU should take up your class 3 compartment. The inverse configuration is also possible and comes out at around a 48.5 light year range. It's a tight fit. For combat, there is one factor that affects the survivability of your ship above all others, and that is the skill of the co-pilot you hire. Whether you like to pilot the mothership or the fighter, having an experienced hand on the controls of the other ship in the duo greatly improves your odds of survival. The spacer's wisdom is to spend the cash to hire the best you can afford, but be aware that better pilots will demand a higher share of your earnings. Using the keelback as a support ship for the fighter, given its underwhelming pitch and roll rates, means that turret-mounted weapons should be the order of the day. With an engineered power distributor and plant, energy weapons can be used fairly comfortably. For engineering purposes, consider efficient blueprints on energy weapons and long-range upgrades to projectile weapons. Ideally, you want to keep your mothership as far away from the action as you can, while still applying pressure on the target. Losing a fighter can be annoying, but not nearly as costly as losing its mothership. All things considered, the keelback is not a ship for everyone, but it does have its own niche to fill. At 3.1 million credits for the dealership model, it's about 42 million credits cheaper than the next cheapest ship that sports a fighter bay, and that's this ship's real selling point. It's a budget ship for the commander who doesn't have time to waste in the rat race and wants to get straight out there and do things, be that exploration or combat. Your correspondent can afford bigger and better ships, but has really enjoyed getting down and dirty with the keelback. When you make actual performance comparisons between it and other ships on a per-cost basis, it performs favorably. It doesn't maneuver like a combat ship, but nor does it handle like a pregnant space whale. It doesn't have a blistering weapons array, but it is modestly armed and the SLF makes all the difference when it comes to damage output. As is true of every ship out there, it's how you equip and engineer it to meet the challenges you face that makes all the difference.